then how to solve the problems related to forces for that some graphical methods are there so there are three popular graphical methods are there first one is using law of triangular forces second one is parallelogram law third one is using law of polygonal forces first i'll start with this law of triangular forces if two forces are acting at a point are represented by two sides of a triangle in order that means same order we have to follow for first two sides then their sum are resultant okay let us say resultant then their resultant is represented by third side taken in the opposite order opposite order means in the opposite direction okay to understand this let us take two forces p and q these two force lines of actions are passing through a common point okay condition is satisfied then you have to represent these two forces as two sides to its and sides of a triangle okay so this p let us assume that p is some 10 newton 10 newton means you try 10 cm line 1 newton equal to 1 cm something in that way you can take and you start drawing this force p is making some 60 degrees 60 degrees with horizontal this force q, force q is making some 20 degrees with horizontal okay now this is some 10 newton means 10 cm this is some 4 newton means 4 cm something in that way you can decide the lengths now transfer this point force q to the end of force p like this okay now these two forces are represented by two sides of the triangle in the same order means like this like this only one direction we have followed here third one actually if you take like this that is the same order but according to definition third side taken in the opposite order so you have to draw this in the opposite direction like this that is the resultant okay so now we have started with p then q then resultant now we will do like this first i'll start with q then p then resultant i am taking p here okay this is some 20 degree line after that here take the horizontal and draw a 60 degree line Try 60 degree line okay with this magnitude suppose 1 newton equal to 1 centimeter something in that way. now order is this these two are in this order if you actually join it the order will be like this but according to our definition you have to join it in the reverse order like this okay now first q then p then resultant in both the methods we have to get the same answer now observe this is the first method we got it like this answer this is the answer the second method this is the answer both are same both the lengths are same okay in this way graphically you can find the resultant of two forces okay using triangle method this triangle method is applicable for only two to find the resultant of only two forces trigonometric approach this is the analytical method mathematical approach you can find the resultant using this equation that is p square plus q square minus 2 pq cos beta beta is the angle between these two forces suppose you want to find the angle between these two forces that means alpha and gamma for that you have to use the lamis equation lamis equation states that if a body has an equilibrium on the action of only three coplanar concurrent forces this is this lamis theorem is applicable and it states that if a body is in equilibrium under the action of three forces, each force is proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two forces. For example, if you take R, then this R is proportional to the sine of the angle between so the sine of the angle between other two forces. R is one force. What are the other two forces? The remaining two, P and Q. The angle between P and Q is beta that is written here. Okay. In the same way, P. What is the other two sides? P is already selected. What are the other two sides? R and Q. 
the angle between R and Q is alpha. That means E by sin alpha. In the same way, if you take Q, that is Q is already we have written here in the numerator. What are the other two leftover forces? P and R. Angle between P and R is gamma. That means Q by sin gamma. In this way, very easily you can remember the Tannis theorem. Now what is parallelogram law? So using this parallelogram law also, you can find the resultant of two forces. If two forces are acting at a point, acting at a point, two forces directly can act at a point or the lines of actions are extended, they can meet at a point. Are represented by two sides in magnitude and direction by its sides of a parallelogram. Then the diagonal of the parallelogram passing through their point of intersection represents the resultant in both magnitude and direction. So P and Q are the two forces. Now you represent P and Q as two sides of a parallelogram. Okay. Like this, I represent P and Q as two sides of a parallelogram. This is my reference, reference horizontal. Then to complete the parallelogram, draw a line parallel to Q passing through end of the P like this. This length is equal to this length. Now draw a line parallel to P passing through this end of the Q like this. This length is equal to this length. Then this is the common intersection point. Through this point you have to draw the diagonal that is like this. This is the resultant R. If this is the angle made by Q, this is the angle made by P. This is the angle made by the resultant R. In this way, you can find the resultant using the parallelogram law. Okay. Now, how to find the resultant of several concurrent forces using parallelogram law? Here, more than two forces are there, four forces are there. Then, how to find the resultant? In that case, what you can do is you have to apply the parallelogram law successively. Take first two forces, find the resultant. Take the resultant and third force, then find the resultant. Take the resultant in fourth force, then you will get the final resultant. Okay, how to apply this? Let us observe the problem. Now draw a parallel line to F1 passing through this end of F2 like this. That means complete the parallelogram. This is the common point from here, draw the diagonal. This is the first resultant, R1. Now take R1 and F3. Now for the time being, I am not showing this F1 and F2, I will show the resultant of F1 and F2 and F3 only. Okay. Now apply the parallelogram law again for R1 and F3, like this. Complete the parallelogram. This is the common intersection point. From here, join the diagonal. This is the resultant of R1 and F3. Okay. Now you recheck to the second stage. Now third stage is find the Final resultant taking R2 and F4. That's why for the time being, I will erase this R1 and F3. Okay. Now find the resultant of R2 and F4. Draw the parallels from this corner, draw the diagonal. This is the final resultant R. In this way, by repeatedly applying the parallelogram law, you can find the final resultant of any number of concurrent forces. Okay. Now, you can see all the forces and you can see the final result. When number of concurrent forces are there, you can use the law of polygon of force also. The law of polygon of forces states that if a number of coplanar forces are acting at a point in such a way that they can be represented in magnitude and direction by sides of a polygon taken in order, that means same direction you have to follow. The resultant is represented in both magnitude and direction by the closing side of the polygon taken in the opposite order. Okay, now we will see this. Now, these are the four forces. Now, I will connect all these forces, one adjacent to the other like a polygon. F2 is shifted to end of F1. F3, I will draw somewhere here. F3, I will draw here. F4, you shift to this end. Okay. Now, these are 
following the counter clockwise direction now come to get the resultant join this end to this end in the clockwise direction opposite order this is the resultant r in this way you can find the resultant when number of concurrent forces are there using law of polygonal forces so all these three are drafted methods you have to draw all these by taking proper angles and by using the drawing instrument each newton force we assume as 1 cm or some 5 cm something in that way sortable scale you have to take and you have to draw what are the analytical methods available to find the resultant of all these concurrent forces that i will discuss in the next video thanks for watching my video if you like this video please subscribe to my channel